Mummy nearly died giving birth to me. This is what remains in my memory of my mother's, nanny's, and father's stories. I remember little to nothing of my childhood at home. I have to try, though. Maybe the important events I should know are right there. How are you, madam? I feel a sharp pain. Do you need anything? I can feel it! The time has come! Everything is ready. Help! Something is wrong! Eric, help! Irene is not well. How are you, honey? I'm getting weaker and weaker. Doctor, hurry! Arena is sick! Don't worry, Irene. The pain you feel is natural. Push, Irene, push! The baby is born. I feel sick. I feel myself wasting away. It's going to be okay. Poor mummy. She has suffered so much. I have hurt her so much ever since I was born. Mummy, I'm hungry. No, it's not meal time, you little nuisance. Mummy, I'm sleepy. No, you can't sleep now. Mummy, I'm thirsty. You're going to annoy me. You just drank. Oh, oh, 
<laughs> Mummy, I have to pee. That's enough! Go to your room! <sighs> Get out of my sight! I can stand you no longer! You. I will make you pay for that. My hands are not enough. You need to learn properly this time. Sorry, it was an accident, Mummy. Please don't hit me. <laughs> Sorry, it was an accident, Mummy. Please don't hit me. Dum. Dum. This is just a game. Is it only a game? I believe the white lady said that my lost memories would return in the place of my happy childhood. This is the only place I have ever been truly happy. Are these my memories then? Is this actually my life? <laughs> what are you doing, Martha? You're only good for judging others, aren't you? What? I didn't do it. So you learn to answer. I like that game. What are you doing? Are you crazy? I'm angry with you. I will beat manners into you, you stupid little girl. Come with me now. Sorry, 
sorry, Mummy. I'm so sorry. Come with me. I will put you in your place, girl. Sorry, Mummy. I won't do it anymore. I promise. Too late. These false tears won't help you. Stay still! Now I'll make you want to bark. Leave my dog alone! There's no point screaming, stupid girl. No, Mummy, please. You're insane! Sure, now I'll show you how insane I am! Help, Daddy, help! Screaming won't work. Your father is not here like usual. Eat it! No! Eat! I won't eat him! I said eat! beginning to remember, but I was so scared to remember too much, especially all at once. I didn't have time to guess exactly what happened. It was making me too upset. Pulling out those memories was like trying to pull out a tooth on your own. Almost impossible, and far too painful. The white lady told me that the church is a safe place and home to its children. Don Atilio, my priest, I have to talk to him. I have to call him on the telephone. Donatilio speaking. Who is it? Father, help me. They're all dead. Daddy, Mummy, everyone. Julia, come to me immediately. Don't stay alone. It's dangerous. Come to town. You can stay here with me and we can talk about everything. Okay? Okay, Father. But first I want to play with my puppets for a while. Julia, don't be silly. Come to church right away.
boys. They had all been killed and it was my fault. They were my age and a few of them were our friends. It wasn't meant to go like that. They found out, but Daddy protected me, of course. Whoever had anything to do with the partisans was shot without hesitation. Suspicion alone was enough. I betrayed my father, but what was I supposed to do? Should I have betrayed Lapo instead? He was my friend and I loved him. But I also loved my father. Which side was I on? I just listened to my heart. I thought it was the right thing, but instead it was the worst thing I could have done. I didn't go anywhere near the soldiers, Germans or allies. They had all caused me harm. I didn't want to approach anyone, for any reason. Once I crossed that threshold, I completely lost touch with reality. Everyone around me had died while I survived everything. I don't remember how things went. I just remember a big light and then photographs were being taken of me. There was a man dressed in white, a doctor I presume. He was asking me questions, but I didn't understand what he was actually asking me. He wrote something on a piece of paper and then two nurses led me away. I was in the mental asylum. Some women were talking to themselves. Others cried. Some were even covered in their own filth. Others were violent and tried to hurt themselves any way possible. There was this one young woman who would pleasure herself all day long, incessantly, to the point where she would bleed. So they would tie her down to the bed screaming, cursing and talking gibberish for days on end. Once her wounds had healed and she was untied, she would just start again. That woman was me. They started to give me injections. What they gave me made my whole body shake. I broke my vertebrae and an ankle. I think it was called cardiazole or something like that. My body was like a fire that didn't want to be put out. When it appeared to be quenched, it would come back, even stronger than before. In the end, though, they won. I stopped screaming and masturbating. I stopped thinking. There was no longer any need for therapy. Something inside of me had died. But nevertheless, I insisted on carrying along this painful journey. I was stronger than I could ever have imagined.
Who are you? Wait, wait. I want answers. Don't go away. Talk to me about Martha, please. Martha, Julia, there's no longer any difference. I am both Martha and Julia, whichever you want. It's us, so it's true. And Mother, is she alive? Mummy is dead. Nobody knows that better than I do, unfortunately. It's useless to try and deceive ourselves. Did I do what I think I've done? Yes, damn it. It really happened. I cut her into pieces and buried her under the bridge. God, all that blood. My God, I knew it. What about Daddy? The soldiers? Did that really happen? It happened. He was shot right in front of me. Fear, pain, shame. I can't remove it. I cannot relive it either. Unfortunately, I knew that already. What about Nanny? Poor Nanny. She really had nothing to do with it. But she died in our villa due to the bombings. We saved ourselves for some time by taking refuge at her house. Privileges for being rich. Feelings don't count for much, though. My poor nanny. I'm afraid to ask about Lapo. Lapo is dead. He was blown up by a landmine. He got into trouble and paid with his life. My dear friend. Poor boy. Just as I remembered, unfortunately. One last question. The pregnancy? Martha was pregnant. Her deformed baby died with her. Maybe she was in pain. That's enough now. All of these questions are pointless, aren't they? It's all inside of us. We just need to turn the mirror. Is it not all just the reflection of an unknowable existence? Nothing more than a puppet show. Ready for everything with open arms. Even ready to kill. Legs always ready to run. The womb that conceived in sin. <laughs> Lastly, the mind. To protect us, it has turned us into monsters. Either way, we cannot live like this, can we? I'll take care of it. I don't need to worry. I'll try to sleep if I can. I've got this.
On the 26th of July, San Casciano was bombed and the church was destroyed. But I was not there then. I was already in the asylum. Once again, stubbornly, I was not dead. The bombs hadn't killed me and I had also survived myself. The most absurd test and the hardest one. The war ended some time ago now, both out there and inside of me. I was on the wrong side of the gate, but now I can turn the page. Life is opening its doors again, isn't it? If I hadn't been so lucky to survive myself, I would have thrown everything away. We think that danger is all around us, ready to attack. But the most devious and misleading dangers are the ones that are inside of us. They grow without us realising. They make us suffer, remain confused and remove our self-respect. I would have wanted to ask for help, but I was alone. This is my story. Thank you for being here, for listening to me. Now I am ready to leave. How long will it take to get home?